Okay, uh, by the way, so instead of going first along the x-axis, then vertically, you could do it the other way around, of course. Start along the y-axis, then horizontally. And, you know, that's the same level of difficulty. You just exchange the roles of x and y. In some cases, it's actually even making more sense maybe to go radially straight out from the origin to your endpoint. But usually, this setting is easier just because, see, each of these two guys was actually very easy to compute. But somehow, maybe if you suspect that polar coordinates will be involved somehow in the answer, then maybe it makes sense to choose different paths. Maybe a straight line is better. Okay. So now we have another method to look at, which is using antiderivatives. Okay, so I mean the goal is the same, still to find the potential function. And you see that finding the potential is really the, two, the you know, multivariable analog of finding the antiderivative in one variable. So, you know, here we did it basically by hand, by computing the integral. And the other thing you could try to say is, wait, I already know how to take antiderivatives. Let's use that instead of computing integrals. And it works, but you have to be careful about how you do it. So let's see how that works. Okay, so let's still do it with the same example. So we want to solve the equations. We want a function such that f sub x is 4x squared plus 8xy, and f sub y is 3y squared plus 4x squared. So let's just look at one of these at a time. If we look at this one, well, we know how to solve this because it's just telling us we have to integrate this with respect to x. Well, let's call them 1 and 2 because I will have to refer to them again. So let's start with equation 1. And let's integrate with respect to x. Well, it tells us that f should be... Okay, so what do I get when I integrate this with respect to x? I get 4 thirds x cubed plus... When I integrate 8xy, y is just a constant, so I will get 4x squared y. And that's not quite the end to it, okay, because there's an integration constant. And here, when I say there's an integration constant, it just means the extra term does not depend on x. That's what it means to be a constant in this setting. But maybe my constant still depends on y, so it's not actually a true constant. A constant that depends on y is not really a constant. It's actually a function of y. Okay, so the good news that we have uh, is that this function no longer depends on x, so it should be, you know, we've made some progress. We've got part of the answer, and, you know, we've simplified the problem. So if we have anything that looks like this, it will satisfy the first condition. So now we need to look at the second condition. Okay, so we want f sub y to be that. And, well, so, but we know what f is. So let's compute f sub y from this. Okay, so from this, I get that f sub y, so what do I get if I differentiate this with respect to y? Well, I get 0 plus 4x squared plus the derivative of g. So I would like to match this with what I had. So if I match this with equation 2, then that will tell me what the derivative of g should be.
Okay, so if we compare the two things there, we get 4x squared plus g prime of y should be equal to 3y squared plus 4x squared. And of course, the 4x squares go away. That tells you g prime is 3y squared. And that integrates to y cubed plus constant. Now, this time, the constant is a true constant, okay? Because g did not depend on anything other than y, and the constant does not depend on y, so it's really, it's a real constant now. So now, we just plug this back into this guy, let's call him star. If we plug this into star, we get f equals four-thirds x cubed plus four x squared y plus y cubed plus constant. And I mean, of course, again, now this constant is optional. So, you see, the advantage of this method is you don't have to write any integrals. The small drawback is you have to follow this procedure carefully. So by the way, one common <coughs> pitfall, you know, it's tempting. So after you've done this, what's very tempting is to just say, oh, well, let's do the same with this guy. Let's integrate this with respect to y. You'll get another expression for f up to a constant that depends on x. And then let's match them. Well, the difficulty is matching is actually quite tricky because you don't know in advance whether there will be the same expression you know, it could be that I got, you know, you could say, oh, let's just take the terms that are here and missing there and combine, you know, the terms that are, you know, take all the terms that appear in either one. That's actually not a good way to do it because if I put sufficiently complicated trig functions in there, then you might not be able to see that two terms are the same. You know, to take an easy one, let's say that here I have one plus tangent square and here I have a cotangent square. Uh, sorry, I have a, I mean, second square then, you know, you might not actually notice that there's a difference. But there's no difference, sorry. Well, whatever. <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, so I'm saying, you know, do it this way, don't do it any other way, because there's a risk of making a mistake otherwise. I mean, on the other hand, of course, you could start with integrating with respect to y, and then differentiate and match with the with respect to x. But, so what I'm saying is just, you know, take one of them, integrate, get an answer that involves a function of the other variable, then differentiate that answer and compare and see what you get.